it's, it's hard pressed for me to see a justification for some of the extreme measures, just given that um, we're talking about people who are vaccinated, so they present far lower risk than, I mean, we're not talking about um, last summer when we didn't have any vaccinations. Um, we've certainly come a long way in that regard. And so it does leave me scratching hmm. my head a little bit. Well, and that kind of segues into this piece that you have up at consumerchoicecenter.org, uh, this new paper out uh, looking at uh, this one size fits all approach. And uh, in your purview, mm-hmm. one size fits all doesn't actually fit at all uh, uh, because uh, we all know that the, and now uh, with uh, a better understanding, particularly of the virus, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, it hits older people, p- folks, uh, you know, who've got different sort of underlying health conditions way worse than, say, you know, our our children, for instance. Uh, yet here in the U.S., mm-hmm. we have some of the you know most strict, uh, some of the strictest, uh, you know, mandates as far as masks and some of the other things in place still for our children. Uh, and this is kind of the overall, you know, uh, discussion that we're having sort of this fundamental conversation uh, where some people believe uh, that a one size fits all approach uh, with uh, you know a nationalized centralized uh, governing body overseeing all of us is the way while others uh, believe in things like individual liberty and you know freedom to make choices even the wrong choices and then to come back from those wrong choices and correct the mistakes so you don't let it happen again you know, give us a little insight into this new paper you have at the Consumer Choice Center uh, website at consumerchoicecenter.org. Yeah, so basically we're looking at hazards and risks, and it's actually quite fitting in regards to COVID. Um, so the people who are maybe in the, the COVID zero crowd, um, so they don't really see any end to government policy so long as there are any cases. Um, they're really just looking at the hazards rather than managing risk. And so we've published this paper. It doesn't touch on COVID, but it looks at all sorts of other things, whether it be chemical policy with PFAS or how cannabis is regulated in Canada. More often than not, we see regulators take a hazard-based approach, um, which often leads to really heavy-handed uh, and, frankly, just overreactions from policymakers, as opposed to maybe having a more adult conversation in terms of where risk lies, what the exposures are, how do we manage risk appropriately to avoid really terrible situations. And so we run through a couple of case studies there where we feel that governments have missed the mark. And we're looking, we're going to probably add to the paper as time goes on, because there are just so many examples um, where these overreactions have some serious consequences for ordinary Americans, for consumers, Uh, or for people who just care about public policy that's actually focused on getting good outcomes rather than um, rather than taking like a hazard based approach and, and overreacting and seeing some of the craziness. 